All right, here we are. I notice I put a Space Invaders background on there. I, I like the little virtual backgrounds. It kind of makes your head look a little weird when you're moving around. Not so much in the small one, but in the big one. I love those little virtual backgrounds. I got a little guy shooting back there. So there he is. Any case, uh, we're going to look at uh, occupations and computing. So this is a modified uh, presentation. I do a, a different one in 103. Uh, in 103, you've got a lot of, of students that they know they need to have some computer skills, but they just don't want to do it. <laughs> and they don't want to believe um, that computers really play that big of a role in their life. And, and so in that presentation, I'm trying to convince them, right? Um, with you guys, I'm not trying to convince you of it. Uh, and the situation is, is computers are everywhere. They're going to continue to be everywhere. You have a very bright future. You, the need for you is not going away uh, before, you, before you're dead. And I know a lot of people like, oh, robots and artificial intelligence and all that stuff. Um, but they don't have the brain power we do. Um, we get into this later into the history, but uh, we didn't really realize how special we were until we tried to, to make computers behave like us. And they were like, oh, wow, this is hard. All right, so <clears throat> occupations in computing or technology or whatever you want to say. Um, I tell my 103 class, and I've already discussed this with you, that there's, there's reasons why you find a job happy and successful. Uh, and, and you may not have watched that yet. But basically it comes down to this. These are a little more general, doing what you love, something that you really enjoy doing, uh, being challenged. Like lots of people will say, oh, just give me that, um, that job where all you gotta do is push a button. Oh, that, that's gonna drive you nuts after a while. Most people just, they need to be challenged and they wanna be challenged in, in the way that they want to, right? So uh, people that enter the tech field are not normally as outspoken and wanting to be around groups. And so it can be a challenge, right, to do that. Uh, but, but usually in technology, people don't like to do that. Uh, but other people do. And so lots of people, you know, if their job is not challenging them in the way of being around a lot of people and talking with people and managing people, then they're not satisfied. Where maybe you're being challenged means that you're learning something new all the time or you, have, you love the satisfaction of fixing that program and being thanked or whatever it happens to be. And that's contributing to the success of the organization. We all have that need of yes, I'm contributing to whatever the end goal is. And then of course, uh, providing for your life and the ones you love. If you're not providing for them, it's very hard to continue doing. You may do something that you totally love, you're being challenged, people are telling you you're contributing to success, but you're not making ends meet. Likely you're gonna end that job and go someplace else. And then uh, also preparing for your future. So meaning, is there retirement set up? Uh, will I be able to move on to another job if I want to those types of things? Those are really where job satisfaction comes from. Now I'm just going to show you this real quickly so that you understand what's out there. And then I think I'll jump over to Google stuff because they've got some statistics there too. Uh, but right here, this, most people are unaware of this, but you can go out to um, the U S department of labor and every three years or so, they produce this list of the most in-demand jobs. And really, the idea is, is to put that out there so that as people start their education, they can look at what's the most in-demand, realizing that I can go get a job doing that easily when I graduate from school. And so I point out in my 103 personal care aides, look at the starting or I mean the median salary there, um, food preparation. You know, always going to need the McDonald's worker. Uh, and then you get to registered nurse. And, and I do, I tell them also that this is probably going to d diminish over time, which scares a few because, you know, here at EA, we really have that nursing thing going. Um, but we are in a boom in healthcare. And that is because my parents' generation are the ones that are getting aged. And they're the baby boomers. They're the largest portion of our population. And so they, we, they need a lot of people to watch after them. Once that, that boom busts, right, and 
unfortunately, someday my parents will will go beyond this life. And uh, when that happens, we may not need as many registered nurses, something that we don't think about. Um, you know, not to get political and stuff, but we have to figure out a way in this country to let good people in uh, and to keep bad people out. We have to figure that out because we're not having the kids that we once did. You know, my parents' generation had five, six, seven, eight, twelve kids. That was a, twelve kids was a big family. Eight kids was a big family when I was young. My family had five. That was not a big family. Now that's a big family, right? That's huge. So most are only having two. And we already know in other countries um, like Sweden, Norway, those countries, they don't have enough people to do the jobs. They've had less, fewer and fewer children so that now they're like, can somebody please come and work over here? Because we can't fill these jobs. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens to healthcare. Because right now we need all those people. Um, but eventually that's probably going to go away home health aides, and then here's uh, software developers, applications, so here's programmers. So they're, they're right there on that list. And uh, moving on, there's software developers again. Uh, what was the difference between these two? This is just any, any education. We're not gonna factor in what education, just any. This one is the fastest growing occupations for bachelor degree or higher. And there they are in software programming. Then we get more um, specific. So this is STEM jobs, which is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, uh, which a lot of high pay is. But notice how many computer related stuff is on here. Software developers, which we just saw. Computer support specialists, right? That's the low end. That's where you want to start at. Computer systems analysts. Computer and information systems managers. And then finally, you get to civil engineers and operation research analysts, which are heavily involved in computers as well. So when you look at, okay, what are the fastest growing STEM jobs? Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Technology has almost everything on the list. And that's the low end through the high end. So that's fantastic. And then this is just a list of different occupations that are out there that you can just go and do. Now, in my other presentations, if you've seen them, and if you haven't, I just go through jobs and I'm gonna pull some up right now. I'm gonna go to USA Jobs and just kind of show you what's available and how many are out there. And we'll look at Google stuff too. So this is coming from uh, Bureau of something, I can't remember where it's coming from, um, but it was a K-12 thing that they did. Uh, but this is this is some some averages. Like if you want to be a webmaster in charge of all that stuff, the low average is thirty six thousand. The high is ninety two. Uh, there's programmers again. Here's technical writing, right here, forty six thousand to eighty five thousand. So if you're good with with English, right, and you understand technology, that's a thing, you know, because you look, oh, I need some help, and there's all these Microsoft help pages or Google help pages and all the stuff. Who's doing that and making sure that it actually is legitimate and readable tech writers are but the tech writer has to be somebody that understands really how this all needs to be put together in the english language and understands the technology i've thought about doing it so maybe i'll be a tech writer I need to get on there and see if i can you know get some jobs get a little part-time job going disaster recovery network administrator management information systems uh, those are more of the manager positions, like you want to move up from your computer service tech into networking and then finally into management information systems. Uh, that's why they usually get paid more because they're dealing with people. Uh, then system security, right? Where, wherever that happens. This particular one, system security, means of dealing with networking and stuff. Dase, database administrators like the IMDB people that I'm talking about. And then systems analysts, uh, which are usually also managerial type, um, controlling a lot of people and, and trying to make them happy. You know, that's systems analysts as well. It's kind of a broad scope on those. Uh, but that's just an idea of what's out there. You know, and this is just some of them. I, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And that's why in that this 
particular portion you ought to be looking at. You ought to be trying to find what is out there. How many different jobs could you go out and do? And there are a lot of them. Uh, so let me go to, we've been doing this stuff with um, Google and they have a new thing called Grow with Google. So we're gonna jump over there. Uh, there's two classes going on right now that I'll make a little video for. Uh, some of you have taken that and most of you haven't and that's a Google certificate program um, and they're, they're not they will take you some time but it's not extremely difficult um, I would consider them beginner courses there's less to do in those than there is in the 103 class um, to tell you the truth uh, but that's CMP uh, 155 and 156 and, and check out the video on it and and what it is you know because you may want to jump into those courses uh, I, I offer two short term that are all online. So you, you finish one course in eight weeks and the other course in eight weeks, uh, both in the fall and the spring. So you don't have to jump into it now. You can get it in the springtime too. Anyway, let's take a look at uh, Grow with Google. What do we got here? And let's take a look at some of their statistics. Uh, they actually are coming out with a UX design, data analytics, project management. We'll, we'll see what we're going to do with those. Currently, they have the IT uh, support careers is what they've got. Um, and so let's, I want to find their statistics. So this is free for us. You don't have to pay anything. So those are the skills. There it is. 80% of IT support learners report career impact within six months. And then this is 54,760 IT support jobs, median salary is, is what they have. And if you come out to their stuff, it tells you that it tr tries to get you ready for CompTIA, um, this particular certification. I cannot find it. Uh, let me pause it and I will find what I'm looking for. All right, well, I never could find it. <laughs> so I just pulled up the uh, page that I have in my OneDrive. And this is really what I wanted to show you is that, you know, this is according to the US statistics here, but there's 215,000 of unfilled uh, IT support jobs, right? So this is not two, 215,000 IT jobs. They're support jobs. They're the ones that, hello, you're talking to Dell support. Uh, hello, you're talking to software support whatever it happens to be, 215,000 unfilled jobs. Those are entry level jobs. And this is a median for them, as I showed you in other charts, that's pretty close to the median that everything shows. Uh, at the low end, it's like 30,000. And there's a lot of jobs that are indeed, can be done remotely. Uh, lots of times you, you have to go in and start someplace Right, you gotta go and start with them and then you can go and do remote. As a matter of fact, I know the person that works for Cable One or Sparklight or whatever they're called now, and he works for them in Phoenix. And he is now, you know, he works tech support and he's now um, able to work from it wherever. He's got his little phone that he plugs into his computer. It connects through IP telephony and uh, he logs in and he's connected to people that need his help and he does that from wherever and i don't think he's making that median i think he's making probably about 38 42. i haven't asked him specifically that's 215,000 jobs across the u.s that are totally unfilled they're not going to be filled uh, because the need is going up and there's not enough people going in and filling it uh, the tech industry was so ticked off when uh, the current president, you know, really started putting all those restrictions on people. And the reason why is because a lot of these tech jobs were being filled by people from India were being, you know that, and people from China, people from other countries that were coming here, not even outsourcing it to their country. They were coming here to get those jobs and start their career and then advance from there. And so there is a lot of pay in tech because it doesn't have enough people going into it. That's the biggest thing. And so scarcity, right, creates demand. And so 
the future's bright. You got a lot of stuff that, that you can go out there and do. And if you aren't satisfied with where you're at, you can jump ship and go someplace else. And that's extremely common in the IT world. I'll probably mention again, but it's extremely common for somebody to say, start a tech job like this guy that I'm talking about. He's working for Sparklight, doing this thing. And then after two years, you know, where's the pay raise? I've got these skills that are marketable. And if they don't give them that pay raise or a chance to switch jobs and, and do something else, then it's easy for him to just fill out that resume, apply out there, uh, USA Jobs and other things. And again, if you haven't seen this yet, you know, let's let's uh, put in tech support. That's what we'll search for. Sorry, I had to move my little picture because it was in the way. Administrative tech support, mission support technician, mission support as IT specialist. Uh, let's see, how many do we have here? We've got more than three pages. And so I'm just gonna, we're gonna take a look. We got information technology support, that's one. There's two right there. There's three, that's a lead. There's four, there's five, there's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We're almost to the top. So 17, there's 17 on one page. So if we take that as an average and say there's 17 on all these pages, let's see how many pages we actually get to. So let me jump to three. Yeah, so this has got three pages. So 17 times three is what has come up just by searching for tech support. That's it. I didn't look for database, I didn't look for program, I didn't look for security or anything else. And this is just government jobs, USA jobs. And so there's a lot, a lot of jobs out there. Uh, it's well worth your time and energy to spend time getting a degree in this area and getting certifications in this area and, and realizing that if job satisfaction comes from more than just doing what I'm doing, uh, which it does, then if you enjoy technology, you will find a job that you absolutely love, that'll pay you what you need to be paid, living where you want to live. And so that's just, you know, my little blurb of what I've seen. I have seen so many students go out of here and just become successful at doing whatever. I mean, we just had a student leave it was about a year ago now, and they're working for the company that's building the backbone for providing GPS coordination information to cars, right? Self-driving cars. So GPS is great, but it's not enough data to keep your car on the road, right? And that's what he's doing. And uh, he's basically their IT admin, and they sent him to Germany for a couple of weeks, and they're going to send him to China, and they pretty much told him, where do you want to go? You want to try one of these other countries? We'll pay you more if you want to go there. Just fantastic opportunities that are out there. Hopefully, I'll have him come back and talk to us. Um, if not, I'll have him do a video. It won't be as exciting, but maybe we'll do a Zoom conference or something. All right, so that's it for that. Thanks very much for watching.